In this next section, I'd like to talk about selecting objects by name and also using selection sets. So to select an object by name, what I'm going to do here is I've got this option. It's next to the select object. There's a button here on the main command panel called select by name. So if I just click that, what you'll find is, in fact, it comes just off screen for me, but here we go. We have this selection box or this dialog come up, which is called the select from scene. And you can see from in here that I've, uh, I've not named anything particularly well. But what I can do is I can select my camera. And if I click OK on that, you can see there what I've got is my camera is selected. If I just pull this out a little way so we can see everything, I've got the camera selected. And I've also got its options available to me in my uh, command panel over here. If I press the dialog again, you see up it comes a second time. I could maybe select my spotlight here and I'll click OK. And there you see the spotlight is now selected. And again, all of its sort of associated parameters are available to me in my command panel. If I come back to it one more time, you'll notice that uh, we need to get into this a little bit more now because it's all you know, very well just saying yes, I want that or maybe I want to select the spotlight and the skylight, in which case I will use the command or the control key rather and I will do a multiple selection using that. So control and control. What happens though when I want to select just say for example my geometry? You'll notice here that I've got different types of icon down the left hand side and then the name of the object on the right hand side. If we look up at the top here, we also have some selection filters, so I can turn on or off the type, certain types of geometry. If I wanted to turn off my geometry, I'll just click that button and you can see now it's no longer highlighted and all of my geometry has disappeared from in here. If I click it again, then you can see that actually everything has come back again, so all the geometry has come back. I also have these options up here now. I've got in here, you know, we can um, display shapes, we've got lights, uh, cameras, and you can see as I, as I move along here, um, there's a little helper that comes up and it tells me all about it. So we've got display helpers, uh, we've got space warps, groups, uh, XREFs, which we'll talk about later on, obviously, bones, and also containers. So I can also display just frozen objects or non-frozen objects, or I can say hidden objects. So if you've got an object that's actually hidden, so say, for example, um, I've got this and I hide it in my scene, then I could say, well, it won't show up in this list, but I could say, actually, I want to show the, uh, the hidden objects, and then maybe they can be selected as well, even though they're hidden. I could show everything, or I could show nothing, or I will we'll show everything there, or I could do an invert display, which of course there's nothing here. So let's go back to our all and we'll just say lights. So I've turned off the lights in this case and we're not showing the lights here. If I go and show my inverted display, what I'm showing is just the lights. So don't think that you have to go through this. If everything is being displayed and you think, oh, I don't want to have to go through and turn off every single one of these buttons. You could just say, well, I want lights. So I'll turn them off now and then I'll invert that. And I can invert that again. And that brings me back to my original sort of type of selection set. If I show this again, I take that there, I could search by a name. So we've got here, if I go spot, and as I start to type in that word, you notice that these two objects were in fact highlighted. I've also got options here where I can do a select all, or I can do a select none, and that's more at this level, the, the naming level, rather than the selection sets up here. Or if I do a spot, I can obviously do my invert selected. So I select everything apart from that spot 01. You'll also notice here we've got something called selection sets. And it's the selection sets that I want to deal with next. If I select just my geometry by doing my inverted filter there, and I can do a left click on my teapot 01, and I shift click all the way down to teapot 011. If I press OK, you'll notice now that all of my teapots, and I press F4 to see the wireframe overlay, indeed, all of my teapots are now selected. So what I can do with this, if I want to not have to bother about going through my select by name all the time, what I can do is I can create something called a selection set. 
And I do that by clicking up here in this dialog. You see we've got a drop down here. And within that, I'm just going to write teapots. And then I'm going to press, very importantly, I'm going to press Enter. Now, if I deselect, I've deselected everything here. And you see I've got selection sets. That, that appears to have gone blank. If I left click, you now see I've got teapots. And there you go. All my teapots are available to me. I also have the ability to edit this if I want to. And I can do that by editing my named selection sets. And again, dialogue has unfortunately appeared off screen, so I'll just drag it on screen. There we go. And I've got some fairly sort of rudimentary things in here. This is my selection set, which is teapots. I could always come back here, and if I select both parts of my light and control click for that, I could create a new selection set called lights. And you can see now that within this dialog, I've got two types of selection sets. One, if I open it up, is my skylight, my spot, and my spot target. And the other one is one called teapots, and that's all of my teapots. Now I could, if I wanted to, select my scene and my camera, and I could create a new one called scene elements. There we go. And my scene elements isn't just lights or teapots. It contains a piece of geometry and a camera. So what I'm really saying there is that your selection sets are just objects. We're not filtering anything here at all. Um, what we're doing is we're saying these are things that I want to very, very quickly and very, very easily be able to select. Now I could add into that. So I could remove these scene elements or I could add extra things into that. So let's say, for example, I select this light and this light here. I could add those into my scene elements. So now you see that my skylight and my spotlight is included in there, as well as being in their own selection set that we've got here. Obviously, I've got the option to remove them. So for example, if I select these, I can come in here and I can remove that element. Let's see, oh, sorry, I can remove the whole of the scene elements rather. And if I select that and I minus out of it, you see you're removing the selected object here from that set. We've got uh, other things here. So for example, if I go, um, let's deselect everything, I select lights. If I click on these select objects in set, I can select everything within that set. And again, that's true of the other selection sets. So it's a very useful thing that we've got here. Uh, I can also highlight the objects as well. So I can highlight them within my list. Um, not really sure where that one's going to be useful. I think the other options are, are much more useful there. Things like, you know, being able to say, yes, I'm now going to select all of my teapots or with the lights, I'm going to select all of the lights. That's very, very useful. So we've got a very, very sort of handy way of working here that if you've got a very large data set, what you can do is you can start to come and you can start to say, well, you know, maybe I'll make, um, so I've got a scene, I want to put all of the garden furniture, I want to put that into a selection set, or I want to put all the hedges into a selection set, or maybe all of the windows or the doors in a scene. Y you can start to sort of break things down and work with them in that way. And it makes working with your scenes, especially large scenes, a lot easier to do.